next student um, is Ms. Michelle Scott. She'll be presenting on solar activity, which of course is Ms. Ronnie Coppin, and that's uh, a student professor White's class. The sun is a star, it's the, our special star in the solar system. And the sun is actually thought to be brighter than 85% of the other stars in the Milky Way. And its average temperature is 27 million degrees Fahrenheit. So with that temperature, some might wonder what exactly happens in the sun that makes it that hot. So at the core, we have nuclear fusion that happens. And this is a picture that kind of represents the nuclear fusion. And that is a reaction in which two or more nuclei collide at a very high speed and they join to form a new nucleus. And in the sun in particular, this is equivalent to 10 million hydrogen bombs per second. And with that kind of power, you would wonder, how does the sun not blow itself up? And this is a picture of how it does not The fusion from inside balances with the gravity on the outside, so the sun stays stable. The other layers of the sun besides the core, this is a picture of it. On the outside of the core is the radiative zone. And then there's the convective zone. And the atmosphere of the sun is made up of two parts, which is the photosphere and the chromosphere. And then the very outside layer is called the corona. So the area outside of the core is called the radiative zone, and this is where photons bounce slowly through the plasma, and it actually takes the photons 100,000 years to get through the zone. And this is when the energy is changed into less energetic photons as it moves through. The next layer of the sun is called the convective zone, and it takes photons, it doesn't take as long as it does for the radiative zone, it actually only takes a month to get through the zone and it's much cooler and denser in that area. Now the sun can be thought of as a massive lava lamp because the plasma cells, when they heat up, they rise to the top just like a lava lamp does, and then once they cool, they'll sink back down. And this is also called granulation. The outside layer of the sun is called the corona, and this means crown because it looks like there's a shiny crown around the sun. Um, and this is actually 300 times hotter than the surface, and it's a collection of immediate gases around the sun. Now, as far as solar activity, some things that can occur are solar storms. This is a picture of a recent solar storm that occurred on March 29th, and you can see the high activity going on towards the center, the different flares. This is a picture of a flare and how big it is. You can see the Earth looks really tiny. And solar flares are enormous energy releases. Another form of energy release is a coronal mass ejection. And these are large bubbles of gas that cause particles to be ejected into the wind. And these actually occur at 2 million miles per hour. So they're very large, very fast. Here's another picture of a coronal mass ejection, which is also abbreviated as CME. And the occurrence of these vary. Uh, we, in the solar cycle, there's what we call solar minimum. And at solar minimum, we can have one CME per week. And at solar maximum, we can have two to three per day. Now, this is called a plasma loop or a coronal loop. It, loop. It's just like a coronal mass ejection, but it's in the form of a loop. And this is a consequence of the twisted magnetic solar flux. Here's a picture of coronal rain. And this is also a consequence of the magnetic field. And they're much bigger than Earth, so you can just imagine plasma, really hot plasma raining down. And this is a picture of the magnetic field. So you can see how the loops and the rain look like they do because the magnetic field looks like this. And a fact about the magnetic field is that they flip every 22 years. 
Another feature on the sun is sunspots. This is the sun viewed as visible light and you can see the dark spots. And these are actually cool spots on the sun. And this happens because the magnetic fields are so strong that they suppress the heat from below. And this is a picture of how big they would be compared to the Earth. So these are very big. This is a picture of the sunspot cycle. It occurs every 11 years. You can see a peak. It, and this graph particularly goes from 1700 to 2004. Another piece of solar activity are auroras, and they're caused by a collision of energetically charged particles with the high atmosphere of the Earth. This is what it looks like from space. These can also be known as the northern lights. And as far as colors go, um, if oxygen is emitted, they look green or yellow. They can also be red, as you can see from the top, it looks sort of reddish. And then if nitrogen is given off, then they end up looking like blue light. And this is a picture of the sun in different wavelengths. Each picture is three minutes apart. Um, from the left, the green is in 94 angstroms. And way on the right, the blue looking one is 335 angstroms. And each picture is three minutes apart. So you can see there's different ways to look at the sun. If you want to see different features better, then you can just change the wavelength. And that concludes my speech. Thank you for listening. Thank you.